Hey everybody, it's Seth from the middle of nowhere and today we're going to install the EK Fluid Gaming A240. We're going to end up taking this fan out here, put the reservoir there, and then the tubing is going to kind of make its way up. Uh, so this is the H100i. I'm going to obviously remove that. The uh, radiator is going to stay up top. I have two fans here that act as push for exhaust. Um, so the Vardars are going to go there. Um, right now, basically all my fans are Noctua, except on the side panel I have two Bitfenix Alchemy fans uh, that are white. But yeah, so we are going to go ahead and install this. And so there's just to get to things, if you're going to do this, there's a couple things you're going to want to need. have. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, you're going to need a bottle or a, a way of getting the liquid in there. This is a thousand milliliter bottle um, because this comes with concentrate of 100 milliliters and requires uh, another 900 milliliters of distilled water. This is perfect. Uh, you can get this off EK's website. Uh, I have two magnetic trays for all the screws and stuff. Here's my spare power supply that I'll be using to connect um, the little uh, plug you get from EK so as to trick the power supply into being on so that way I can get the pump going. So I'll hook all the pump and everything to that as opposed to the actual power supply on the PC. And yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll get going.
Hey everybody. Well, I didn't get to finish filming the installation of a loop or filling the reservoir, and I know a lot of people like to watch that kind of thing, but here it is, the EK Fluid Gaming A240 fully installed and in use for the last five days. While the installation was fairly easy, it and the product are not without issues, and I wanna go ahead and talk to you about that. I'm very satisfied overall. If I were to sum up the Fluid Gaming line in a nice blurb for you, it'd be this. The Fluid Gaming A240 is a complete product out of the box with easy to understand instructions. It improves CPU temperatures under load compared to similarly priced closed loop or all-in-one water coolers. Above all, it takes away the fear of entering the world of custom PC water cooling and makes it affordable. So some of the things I wanna talk about with regards to the Fluid Gaming line are price, ease of installation, mate, expansion, maintenance, and performance. As I mentioned in my previous video, uh, about this and the unboxing, the Fluid Gaming line is extremely price competitive. Uh, compared to its Deep Cool, Corsair, and NZXT uh, brethren, it runs anywhere from 10 to $30 more. If EK could manage to shave off just $10 more, this solution, I think, would be extremely hard to pass up by anyone building their own PC. When it came to the instructions, they were easy to follow and brief, they had good illustrations to show you what you needed to do, and so definitely, definitely a bonus. When it came to some of the parts used, I kind of am scr left scratching my head, uh, f especially with regards to the use of hex screws. So for the, getting the fans to the radiator, uh, they give you hex screws. They give you hex screws for mounting the um, pump to the bracket. Now those I don't mind. It was the hex screws for the radiator and the fans that I kind of didn't get. Um, I just couldn't get enough torque, so what I ended up doing, mostly for two reasons, uh, what I ended up doing was using the screws from my H100i, because they were Phillips head, so I was able to, you know, get the nice screwdriver in there, gesticulating all over the place. Um, and secondly, the screws were a tad longer, so there is, the, there's no pull-out bracket or anything, but there's a little metal bracket between the fans and the radiator, and the EK screws were just not long enough. The CPU block, the radiator fittings, and the res, those were all very easy to install. When it came to the tubing, the only issues I had was initially getting them over the barb, but the instructions said dip it in warm water, which I did, and it made it a lot easier. The only other thing when it comes to the tubing is, is you maybe have one or two mistakes worth of tubing. So measure twice, cut once, and always actually cut a little bit longer. The only other issue with the installation had to do with my own case, and that's just the limitations of the case. Now every chassis is gonna be different, and some are more suited to water cooling than others. And while I could, you know, I had a nice spot for the, the res to, to be installed and everything else, the, I did have some issues just you know, getting the radiator installed in terms of the fans. I mean, this is, this was, this is a difficult case even for the H100i, um, just you know, getting that going and, and then positioning the res the way I wanted it to. I think I actually wanted to face it this way for whatever reason. Um, I probably should have faced it that way, but I do like it kind of facing towards the edge, uh, the, 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 the case cover anyway. So yeah, so this is no fault of EKs, just wanted to make that plainly clear, um, and it will but it will affect customers on a chassis by chassis basis. So just be mindful if you buy this product, how you're gonna lay it out and go from there. The next category I wanna talk about is expansion. And as I mentioned in my unboxing video, there is none right now, right now. Okay, I wanna make that perfectly clear. EK recently just released a blog post where they have more concretely stated they will be releasing aluminum parts uh, in the near future. So yeah, expansion, zero right now. But that will change and I'm looking forward to it. When it comes to maintenance, much like expansion, we are not in the greatest position. So because there's no custom fittings, such as a splitter or a drain valve, you're going to have to actually unseat the entire pump reservoir combo, get a little bucket, and then empty it that way. It's just not ideal and it's a pain in the bum. You shouldn't have to do that. Unfortunately, it's what we're left with. But this again will change when we get more parts and you know that will, that will improve. So this is more or less, suffer we're suffering early adopter syndrome and you'll get that with a lot of products in the tech world. When it comes to performance of the A240 compared to the H100, I couldn't be happier. 
On average, my idle temperatures differed by about five degrees Celsius. And when I did my tests in Cinebench and a DaVinci Resolve render, the differences were even more dramatic. Cinebench different uh, under load. So with Cinebench, it was 15 to 17 degrees. And the DaVinci Resolve render uh, test difference was 18 to 20 degrees. Uh, at no time under either cooler did the fans ever peak um, so there was always room to go you know even faster and actually on both of them I tested to see if there was any benefit to ramping the fan speeds to 100% and really there wasn't the that that top cooling potential was reached and the only thing I ended up succeeding was uh, creating a wind tunnel of noise. I'm definitely happy with my purchase of the A240. It is doing a magnificent job cooling my CPU, and I've been able to use some zip ties to kind of wrangle in the, the droopy tubing, and it, it looks pretty good. Well, that's it for me from the middle of nowhere. Like the video if you liked it. Leave any questions or comments you might have down below. Show your support for the channel by hitting that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And while you're here, why don't you take a gander at any one of my other videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.